I want you guys to look at all of these pictures that are on the screen and tell me what they all have in common. What all of the people in these pictures have in common is that all of them received backlash, not for their acting ability, not for their problematic past, but they all received backlash for having the audacity to be black people in fantasy. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about why black people don't belong in fantasy and explain to you why that statement is wrong. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to Ella Pastoral. And on this channel right here, I typically talk about the shows that I have watched and just problematic things that I noticed in my favorite pieces of media. In today's video, I'm obviously gonna talk about why a lot of people just don't like the idea of seeing black people in fantasy and why that is just so problematic. This video is going to have spoilers for the following topics. We're going to have spoilers for House of the Dragon, The Bastard Son of the Devil himself, Amazon's Lord of the Rings. At the time of me recording and filming this, there has only been one trailer showing Disney's newest Little Mermaid adaptation. And when I tell you this one singular trailer broke the internet and really showed people's hearts hardcore racism it really showed everyone's hardcore racism random people from overseas came together like a very ghetto Voltron to show how racist racist could really be. There has already been a lot of videos debunking all of the racist and borderline unnecessary critiques that this one trailer has gotten and I personally recommend these two videos that are on the screen for you guys right now but I personally really wanted to give my own I don't even know opinion on this situation and how it relates to the topic of people thinking that black people don't belong in fantasy. So if you guys don't know anything about the Disney Corporation, you need to know that they have a long racist history. Disney has had a long racist history because the founder of the company was a bigot. Like that man had so many issues with different minority groups. It's unfathomable. He hated Jewish people, he hated Native Americans, he hated black people, and you can really see this if you look at old pieces of Disney art. The modern day Disney Corporation has tried so hard to let us forget about the company's racist past, but here on this channel, we ain't never forget. For making black people subservient, for making black people blackface portrayals, the Disney Corporation has done a lot of problematic things. Only recently has Disney really tried to get away from the negative connotations that some people had towards it. And I really feel like that's what they're trying to do with this Little Mermaid remake. So we all, I don't know if we all know, but if you guys didn't know, this beautiful lady right here is literally a protege of Beyonce. This Beyonce, the Beyonce that did a whole entire like Black Panther, Malcolm X, I don't even know homage at the Super Bowl. So in order to really like make us forget about his racist past, I really feel like that's why they got Beyonce's protege involved. So we could see that, hey, Disney is really trying to move forward in a positive light. And when I first found out that Halle Bailey was going to be the Little Mermaid, I was shocked because I didn't expect it. And I also did not expect that there would be this much racist backlash. Obviously, I expected some people to be mad because whenever black people do anything, there is always going to be someone there mad. But people who I haven't talked to in years have come up and literally bullied and shamed this girl for no reason. Like there's this girl who I went to high school with who personally texted me out of nowhere, me, a black person, saying, can you believe they made Ariel black? Never in my life would I have expected so much backlash towards Halle Bailey for being the Little Mermaid. And I know that people weren't serious because they were only attacking her because she was black. They didn't attack her on her acting abilities. They didn't attack her on her ability to sing because they know they couldn't come for those two things, which I feel like are the most important things when being in a movie, a musical movie even. And they started making nonsensical arguments, talking about some, oh, black people can't be gingers. Malcolm X being alive in this, in this century proves otherwise and making nonsensical like all of the arguments i saw against this little trailer were crazy like um princess weeks i believe really dug into it so i'm not gonna dig too deep into it in this video but it was just the most nonsensical arguments i've ever seen and i even saw random people of color saying this is so unnecessary da 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 this da 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 that who would y'all have wanted to play Ariel because now now I now I gotta ask the questions I saw people you know saying it should have been Ariana Grande but y'all were mad that Halle Bailey wasn't a natural redhead so what's the difference 
The difference is that y'all wanted a white girl. And so y'all decided to attack this innocent black woman because y'all didn't get the white girl that y'all wanted. And what was worse is that, especially on TikTok, I saw so many people making nonsensical arguments about how melanin can't properly work in underwater situations. Like, damn, black mermaids got y'all mad like that? That y'all bringing biochemistry into it? I'm begging y'all, please be so serious. Because when I grew up, I was always exposed to a lot of diversity. And I really feel like that's the issue with a lot of the people who are complaining about seeing a black Ariel. When I was a kid, I specifically watched this HBO show called Happily Ever After, Fairy Tales for Every Child. And this show was literally peak. And I really wish a lot of y'all would have watched it growing up because I really feel like it would have opened up your minds about seeing black people in fantastical situations. This show had all different types of cultures portraying different fairy tale stories and I really feel like if y'all would have watched that y'all wouldn't be so bigoted and so confused at seeing different people especially people of color in these roles and I really feel like for all of y'all who are really upset about this I really feel like you guys need to relax because personally for me I believe all of these movies and tv shows exist in like a cinematic universe and what really got me was the fact that everybody was acting like this one live action movie was going to get rid of all of the white aerial content that we still have to this day you see the sea you know say we under it i'm a crab but your girl want this sausage see your fit panigram that is not it why the prince want a girl with fish crutches i may say any mini more take your girl to a show she a jump on the line she a swing on the road why you wanna be a human life really hard need to stay under the scene if it's an eye 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 your aerial anybody mess with you a burial tell them say you're brave you're not scary girl call king triton for air it out him we air it out like literally it didn't make any sense. Like for me, you guys can still go on Disney Plus today and go see the original Little Mermaid and the sequel where she's still white. In fact, I know a couple years from now, they are going to make a live action rights Ariel remake for everyone who's so upset. The fact that there is a singular black Ariel, does that mean that white Ariel exists? Wish I could be part of that yeah, we piped up in that deep sea. Prince Eric better hope that Ariel don't never meet me. No, I always gotta keep a trident like the cane do. I be in the hood, I'm never tucking, got my chain loose. Yeah, I just put up on that shit with a bitch. I'm a Reese, it does on my wrist. Uh, think I just caught me a plan and you fishing all over my pay, you a snitch. Uh, I got some bad he ready for action. I pull up like Roddy, I'm rich. Uh, by the new chopper, I'm calling it Ursula. I got my hand on my hip. Uh, like personally for me, whenever a new reboot of any TV show or any movie comes out, I think of it as like a cinematic universe. Your version that you like is still out there, so go watch it. Like for me, I didn't like the Winx reboot or the Monster High reboot. And you know what I did? I pretended the new ones didn't exist and I continued to watch the old stuff. Because with the internet, everything is still available to us. And I want you guys to go watch the old movies and leave the new area alone. Because y'all, Y'all are doing way too much. It's getting out of hand. But this whole Little Mermaid situation really started to brew in my mind for months and made me really realize that y'all think black people don't belong in fantasy situations. And I really want to talk about it because it wasn't just the Little Mermaid situation that really made me see that y'all just don't like black people. And y'all really don't like black people in your fantasy world. Hmm. Funny. Yes. But not funny. Ha ha. Funny, weird. Another reason why I wanted to make this video is because I really wanted to talk about the nonsense that was going on in the House of the Dragons fandom and even in the TV show. So if you guys don't know anything about House of the Dragon, it is literally a spin-off show of HBO's most popular TV show, I think ever, known as Game of Thrones. And House of the Dragon is practically set in a medieval fantasy world that has dragons, magic, and a lot of incest. This show involves a lot of incest. I want to tell you guys that now before I really hop into my point. This TV show specifically follows House Targaryen and how they fell into the chaotic state that they were in in the original Game of Thrones. And personally, 
I really enjoyed the TV show. I really, really think that it was good. And recently it just won, I think the best award for drama, like the best award for a drama series in 2022. So other people enjoyed it a lot as well. But the controversy that has even caused the House of the Dragon franchise to be mentioned in this video is its treatment of its black actors and characters. So if you guys don't know, the entire Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon franchise is based on the book series by George R.R. R. Martin. And obviously, most of the prominent characters are white people. Based off the TV show, because I didn't feel like reading the books, 98% of the most prominent characters are white. And the two characters who weren't white were slaves or slave adjacent, but heavy on they were slaves. And so I guess because of the backlash that they got from the original Game of Thrones, having the only black people being slaves, they decided that they were going to, I guess, fix that issue by allowing there to be black people in the House of the Dragons prequel series. And they decided to do this by having one of the most prominent families in Westeros where the place, you know, the books, the, the TV shows is set, be House Valerion. And as you guys can see, these are a bunch of black people. There are a bunch of black people here. And I already told y'all guys, I already told y'all, whenever there's black people in anything, there's gonna be a problem. There's gonna be a major problem. And it was a mess and I'm gonna explain it to y'all. But before I really start explaining the nonsense that showed me House of the Dragon fans aren't serious, I have to explain, right? The backdrop of this nonsense. So the Targaryen family comes from a magical island that got decimated a long time ago. And some of the people who lived on this magical island were able to escape. And this is House Targaryen and House Valerion. So they have some relation because they're the only people who survived the doom of Valeria. That's what they call the events that destroyed their island. So the character that we have right here is our 12 year old Lena. I think her name was Lena, trying to get a political alliance with the king, her cousin, King, I'm gonna put his name somewhere, I forgot his name. Let's call him the king, so y'all know he's the king. And so the 12 year old is trying to get with the 30 year old for some type of political alliance. And the rest of us were sent, we're looking at this and saying, oh my gosh, no, not the 12 year old trying to get with the 30 year old. But there was this dude who tweeted this viral, viral tweet, talking about some, oh, obviously the king didn't want to get with the valerian girl because she isn't pure-blooded valerian because she's black remember when i told y'all people were jumping through hoops to try to be racist and justify why there can't be a black little mermaid because melanin doesn't work underwater that's the same logic that's being applied in this situation because obviously at least in the canon of the show Valerians or whoever escaped that freaking the doom of Valeria. You're talking about she can't be a pure-blooded Valerian because she's black. The Valerians are just people who had dragons and dragon magic. For you to talk about she can't be Valerian because she's black is crazy. In the canon of the show, you know that don't make no sense. Just say you don't like black people and keep it pushing. Like, don't try to have some logic behind it because you knew it didn't make sense. You knew it didn't make sense because they was dragging him on Twitter because it just didn't make sense. And after that controversy, I took a major break from watching House of the Dragons. And recently I binge watched the entire first season. And I noticed the showrunners were treating the black characters a little crazily. So I've come on my channel to tell y'all, to tell y'all about the shenanigans. So the main conflict of the House of the Dragon TV show is that we have Team Green that has Queen Allison and her kids. And we have Team Black, which has Queen Rhaenyra and her kids fighting to see who should be on the throne, right? And Team Black ironically has all of the black people. And if you guys watch the show, you'll notice that there is a huge preferential treatment towards Team Green. And because of the fact that there is a huge preferential treatment to Team Green, there means that there is some nonsense going on towards Team Black and the black people as well, by proxy. And like I told you guys previously, House Valerion is a part of Team Black. And I really feel like the showrunners have a huge bias towards Team Green. And because of the fact that the people who are making the show have a bias towards Team Green, I really feel like they cut out a lot of scenes that would have been more impactful for the development of the entire Team Black. So let me explain to you guys what I mean. My first problem with House of the Dragon is I really feel like they watched a lot 
lot of character development for everybody. I really feel like it was the most impactful for Team Black because we time skipped crazy and the fact that they fast forwarded so much and didn't let Lena and a lot of the other characters develop properly when she decided to low-key herself because she didn't want to die in childbirth and literally had her dragon set her on fire it didn't hit as hard as it would have hit if they would have gave us more time to see her grow up and develop and even get into a relationship with Damon in the first place and on top of that they decided to sidestep a lot of the development for the black characters just for the benefit of our white characters. So, as I said, Lena got with Damon and they had two kids. Um, let me look right here because the names the names of these House of the Dragon characters are too similar. They had two kids, Bela and Reyna. And literally, there was a scene that they cut out of the show where Damon is comforting his two black daughters, practically telling them like, oh, everything is going to be okay after their mom literally committed. Well, the showrunners literally said they wanted to remove it from the official cut of the show because it would ruin Damon's character and ruin the fact that he is a morally great character. And I literally had to be like, huh? Because we, as the audience who were watching the show, know for a fact that Damon is... A horrible man like literally in the first couple of episodes he went to the capital of the city he went to the capital of their whole entire restaurants and just started killing people and even his brother was like yo like you doing a lot you know that right and there was another scene where after his brother after his brother's firstborn son dies as an infant he literally goes to like a bar or a tavern and makes fun of the dead baby and then, after making fun of the dead baby, he steals the dragon egg. And this is a huge taboo for the House Targaryen family because once you give a baby an egg and you steal that joint, you're a bad person. Like, you know the whole entire phrase, like stealing candy from a baby? That's what he did. And even in the later episodes after, you know, the funeral of his wife and stuff, he literally slaps his new wife. So we know this man is a terrible man. So the show one is talking about some, oh, we needed to remove the scene because we didn't want Damon to see too sympathetic, didn't make any sense. We know this dude is a garbage piece of trash, but the fact that they chose to remove this scene, which I really feel like was vital character development for our black main characters, really goes to show you the mindset that the House of the Dragon showrunners were on. Because they could have, they literally could have included it. They should have included it even. But that wasn't the only situation that I was looking where I was like, y'all y'all, y'all doing a lot. But y'all doing a lot and I'm going to call y'all out on it. So as I told you guys, Lena's daughters are Bela and Reyna, right? So there was a scene that got cut out of the later episodes where Bela literally says that she's going to get up on her dragon. And even if her grandmother tries to stop her, she won't let her stop her because she's going to defend Rhaenyra because she is her queen. And then freaking, it was so sad and impactful because their grandmother was practically like, I'm so sorry, I was so quiet. I literally saw my daughter in you. And that scene was so impactful to me because literally the children of House Valerian have suffered so much. And the fact that they didn't include that scene really let me, let me know what they were on because that scene was so powerful. It was so powerful. And I know that they weren't serious because we had a bunch of unnecessary scenes of Team Green this season that really could have been removed in favor of the more emotionally impactful scene. The first scene that really showed me that they weren't serious is we have Prince Aegon. He is the person who Rhaenyra is fighting for the throne with. We have a scene where he is in a window doing things to himself where the whole city can see him. And his mom walks in and just says, we need to go. That wasn't the only nasty scene that I was forced to watch against my will. There was a scene where Queen Alicent, the queen, mind you, takes off her socks and lets her bare toes be out. And you might be like, Emma, what's wrong with the girl taking off her socks? There is this man who is on Team Green who's like, I don't even know, like her advisor. He decides to do some stuff to himself while her feet is out. I screamed because I was like, no, no, I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. We had to watch that. 
but y'all could not include scenes that literally led to development of our black characters. But we had to watch some foot fetish nonsense. I rest my case. Cause we, oh, I, for those who haven't watched the show, I'm telling y'all that foot fetish stuff came out of nowhere. It was a little jump scare. And I saw so many people on TikTok trying to justify it, talking about some, we needed that scene to show that Queen Allison doesn't have any power like she thinks she has power but she doesn't because she even though she's the queen she has to i don't know degrade herself like this for her for her i guess advisor's benefit but the, literally the entire arc of allison is that she has to obey men maybe her garbage husband who literally treats her like trash her terrible father that manipulates her or her predator son we could have definitely left out that scene and still understood that Allison has no true power. And then I even forgot to talk about Lena's brother. Like Lena's brother, I'm really blanking on his name right here, but I'll put a picture of him. He was the only black queer man in the show. They let that man have a love interest for one episode. Half an episode at that and then killed him. We get no, we get no lovey-dovey development between, between, uh, Lenor, that's his name, Lenor and his lover, and he dies that same episode. They introduced his lover that day and got rid of him that same day. It was crazy. And that's how I really know that black people don't get respected in fantasy. And even when we're included in fantasies, our stories aren't represented or portrayed in an honest way thoughtful way like they could have really did their thing like i really feel disappointed but it's not just the little mermaid and the house of the dragon franchise where black people are being mistreated let's move on to the next section if you guys remember the intro of this video you remember me talking about different actors slash actresses that have caught a lot of backlash for being the wrong race and being in a piece of fantasy and i want to talk about this lady right here i was watching the lord of the rings remake on amazon prime and i didn't even know that this was happening until i went on that that forsaken app known as TikTok, and i was so confused why people were so mad at this lady playing i guess the dwarf king's wife because she is such a background character right and she didn't even suck like i really thought that i was going to get to her episode and she was gonna give bad acting but her acting was very much in line with everyone else's but the racism popped out y'all the racism popped out i didn't even finish the lord of the rings remake but it was very interesting to see how much people were getting on this lady when there were also other black characters. Like, it was strange. From all of my research into making this video, I really found out that even if you are going to put a black person in a piece of fantasy and they are going to take the place of a white person, if you don't have someone who is racially sensitive to be a writer or showrunner you're gonna have some crazy problematic things pop up by accident so there was this netflix show that i watched called the bastard the bastard son of the devil himself and the original character was supposed to be a white man and they opted it to be a biracial black man and when i tell y'all even though it wasn't supposed to be given racism it was given racism so the basic plot of this tv show right here is that the main character is the bastard son <laughs> of the devil himself. And the devil in this situation is this rogue magician character who's out killing witches or whatever. And because of the fact that his dad is like Loki, a domestic terrorist, everyone hates this man, right? Because they're afraid that he's going to inherit his dad's like evil demon powers or something like that. And because of the fact that his dad is the evil magician dude, they treat this dude like the scum of his earth. Like his half sister has such a vendetta against him and literally shape shifts to be his mom and said, and literally bullies him talking about some, you killed me, you killed me while dressed up as their mom. It was crazy. And it wasn't just the bullying from the sister that got me. The sister was crazy, but literally everybody in the magical world was bullying him. There was a scene where they literally rescued him from being attacked by other people. And after saving him, they jumped him. 
And when I took, it was, it was going on and on and on. I watched a good five episodes before I said enough is enough. And there was only so much that I could take because all of the scenes where this black man was getting brutalized by a bunch of white people was giving me like I was watching a civil rights film. And I really didn't like that because when I go to fantasy, I go to fantasy to escape the real world. It was giving me like a jumping. Like if you guys know anything about the history of lynchings, that's what the bastard son of the devil himself was given. And I really couldn't stand to see our main character be beaten up like that. Like, there was barely a, a second where that man was in black and blue. And I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Okay, guys, so you know whenever I make these call-out videos, I always try to give out recommendations that you guys can engage with instead. And so this is my recommendation portion of the video. And so obviously a bunch of the recommendations that I have for you guys are going to involve black women. The first book that I have for you guys is called Legendborn and I love this book series so much. It literally caused me to start reading again in 2022. And the last time I read a book before then was in middle school. So that's how good this book series is. This book series literally was so, I don't even know, like unexpected because I came in with a certain expectation and I left being stunned, astonished, ready to read more. So the basic premise is about this young girl who's really, really smart, so smart. She gets accepted into an early star program at a college. And at this college, she gets into a bunch of magical shenanigans. And I really feel like this is such a good book series because y'all know when it comes to magic stuff, bro, they refuse to put them kitties in college. This one, they in college, y'all. They in college. And this one was so, so good. Um, It deals a lot with magic, um, secret societies, familial trauma. It's also a mystery going on too. This book gives you anything you could want. So if you're interested in something that's really gonna tickle your brain in terms of magic and fantasy, Legendborn is the way to go. The duology, the second book in the duology just came out too. So you're definitely gonna be reading for a good while. The second book series that I have for you guys is called Ray Bear by Jordan Ifuko. I'm so sorry for butchering your name, but I'm putting it on the screen for you guys to actually see. And this series literally had me in my feelings. Like, I don't cry a lot when I read, but this one had me very emotional. It has to deal with African magic, um, court politics. Y'all know I love me a good court, royalty. Um, generational trauma. Your girl loves some generational trauma, y'all. Um, this book series, it, it talks a lot about platonic love. And I really appreciate books like that. This was also my first time reading about an asexual male character too. This book series also had me hot. There was a bunch of times where I would have to stop, stop listening to the audiobook, get up and just walk, walk until my anger, my anger was cooled down. This book Yo, it's very tantalizing. I can't recommend it hard enough. And I also wanted to end my recommendation list by including other books by other people of color that aren't just black people. I personally haven't read these books yet. They're on my to read list, but I've heard great things, especially about Iron Widow. So definitely check these books out because if you want to fulfill your fantasy needs and the TV shows and movies they keep releasing ain't doing it, Y'all got to go into reading books, y'all. Reading books about fantasy will change your life, I promise. So now that we've talked about the current state of black people in fantasy, I really wanna talk about what the future of black fantasy really is. Personally for me, I have a lot of hope for black people in future fantasy projects. 2022 was literally the year of black fantasy. We had black people in House of the Dragon and House of the Dragon literally won an Emmy for best drama of the year. So I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do in season two. We had black people with interview with a vampire. That definitely is gonna get a season two, so I'm excited to see it. We also had a black multiracial girl in Invitation as a primary love interest. And y'all know they don't let black people be love interests. Black women especially be love interests. So that was so game changing to see. And I really feel like in the future, we're definitely going to see more black people in fantasy. We're gonna see black writers. We're gonna see black showrunners. We're gonna see people who, who are gonna do the bare minimum and have 
research done before they write black characters. And I really feel like the future of black fantasy is gonna be a beautiful one because when I posted this community post asking you guys to give me fantasy pieces of media where you feel like black people are represented well, surprisingly i got a bunch of recommendations y'all really came through and showed out and i want to thank you guys so much for responding because y'all are actively giving me good fantasy pieces of media to indulge myself in and i really feel like with how strong of a community we have here and overall how many black people enjoy fantasy we'll definitely get to a point where black people are represented in fantasy in positive and great ways and black stories in fantasies will be allowed to exist. And for all those people who hate the idea of seeing black people in fantasy, I'ma need y'all to get over yourselves because we're here to stay. Okay, so if you've gotten to this point of the video, it truly means a lot. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe because I got a bunch more videos for you guys coming up soon. And if you guys have your own fantasy pieces of media that you really feel like represent black people really well, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. And if you guys have any video recommendations that you want me to do for this 2023 year, let me know your girl your girl wants to make videos that you guys like and so that's all i have to say for this video thank you guys again i really love how you guys be supporting me and i'll see you guys in the next one bye